Alright folks, I am the Dawn Father, um, also known as Diggy, which is my real name. I am from the Dawn's channel and the Dawn of World Sports on YouTube. I've been asked to talk a little bit about why I like um, Aussie rules and do I think the AFL should look into uh, making footy a more international sport. And this question, these questions rather, were asked by Matthew. <laughs> Your name's going to give me a hard time. Baldacino, Baldacino, Matthew Baldacino is doing a skill project on the idea of um, footy becoming more of an international sport. So, he actually asked why I like footy. Well, I'm going to keep this really, really simple. It's a proper physical man sport. I know ladies and girls play it, um, but you know what I mean. A physical contact sport, a gladiator type sport. 100% um, commitment on the footy field. Proper hits, proper tackles, proper passion. Pride in, in the stands. It's just, uh, 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 and when you look at the way Australian people love it, um, it's a religion there, uh, and it's infectious. When you start to watch uh, AFL uh, live and you get to engage with Australian people who are fanatical about the sport, it's very, very infectious. Their love for their sport. I know that um, love for a sports team. I have it myself. And when you see somebody with a different sport showing the same passion. Uh, it is infectious and, and it does rub off uh, and it's been easy to fall in love with this sport um, so it's been an actual fact, it's been an absolute pleasure to learn about it and watch it and engage with Australian people talking about the sport so just keeping that brief about why I like it um, this should be the main question and the main question should it become more of an international sport? Right now nationally it's the biggest game in Australia isn't it? Um, Rugby league fans may argue rugby league is, but I feel that when you look at the numbers that they get in the stadiums, the numbers viewing it on the, um, from the TV uh, companies is far greater. So based on that alone, it's the biggest sport in Australia when it comes to contact sport. Um, so it's already established as a national sport. You're looking to turn it into a national. Big hurdles you're going to face is where and why. Why do you want to do it? Do you want to do it um, for financial reasons or do you want to do it because you love the sport and you want the sport to be enjoyed around the world? So where then? Where do you want it? Your problem you're going to face with where is when you look at North America, they've got established sports there that they love and not a lot of sports break into that. They've got American football, basketball, ice hockey, baseball, already established sports going to be very difficult to break in there. Then you look at Asia, Africa, um, Europe and South America and soccer is an absolute way of life here. So what you've got to do is you've got to try and build an appeal for the sport. So instead of trying to create teams if you like, loads and loads of teams, spending money on creating teams in another country, you have to make them aware of the sport. I can speak um, with confidence here and saying not a lot of people in the UK know that much about Aussie rules. They couldn't um, really, they couldn't tell you the rules for a start. Um, they couldn't probably tell you that it's played on an oval or a cricket oval. Um, they couldn't name the players, let alone even the teams. Um, they would find that very difficult. Um, so it's certainly about making people aware of the sport initially. Um, and then trying to grow it. It's going to be something where the old saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I'd imagine now, um, when you're talking about the sport, bearing in mind, if you look at Australia as a model itself, the AFL has struggled to put uh, a team in the Gold Coast. They've struggled in Western Australia to find, to create, to make the, the Fremantle Dockers a proper competitive team against the West Coast Eagles. Um, West Coast Eagles are certainly more dominant in Western Australia. You've also got, um, when you look at the GWS Giants, they had got to the Grand Final, which is very, very good indeed. But it didn't just happen overnight. So what you've had there in Australia is a lot of time, a lot of money invested. You're putting teams into maybe rugby league areas where they've not really got as much of an appetite for Aussie rules and you're trying to grow it and grow it and grow it. So it's a generation's time when you've got a team competing in the AFL for maybe a generation, you're going to have more fans, more people in that area looking and inspired by the, the team that they've watched in their area. Uh, to take up AFL, to take up footy, to want to be an AFL star. 
and that's in Australia where everybody's familiar with the sport. So my feelings on this one is internationally, I would absolutely love to see this sport grown internationally. But my problem with the idea is where do you want to take it? You don't want to put it in China like you've got um, Port Adelaide, obviously Chinese owner. They're doing this purely for, for financial reasons and not for the growth of the sport and the love of the sport. It's for financial reasons, which look, it's perfectly fine. It's, it makes a lot of sense. With trying to grow a sport, you also want to bring in new revenue systems, uh, streams. You want to be bringing in um, commercialised revenue from different companies all over the world. You, you, you simply have to do that. Um, it wouldn't be sustainable for the AFL to spend so much money on trying to grow the sport internationally based on the money they make in Australia and Australia alone. So, where do you put it? London, New York would be unbelievable cities to try and put a showcase game in. And the reason why I say this, a showcase game, is because you're looking at countries that have already got extremely established sports already. They're a way of life for most people. Like in Australia, soccer in the UK is a religion. In America, American football is a religion. So you're, gonna, you're trying to tap into the American market, the European market, right to the... Uh, and, and try and get um, new supporters to, to not only love the sport, to then go on and play the sport, want to, uh, you know, make their own teams, have their own teams, playing in their own leagues, which they actually already have here in the UK and Ireland and in America. They do have leagues all around Europe and stuff, but again, not a lot of people know about it. So why I say showcase game is, it needs to be at the like of a Wembley Stadium or in a big arena uh, in America, 80,000, 90,000 fans for a one-off game and you simply cannot have a showcase game played by the like of St Kilda or Gold Coast Suns. There's no appeal there. So what do you do? Do you put in Richmond Tigers against the West Coast Eagles? Say they meet each other in a preliminary final and say, look, this isn't played at your home ground anymore. We're looking to expand this sport and we're looking to do it internationally and we're looking to do it in Wembley Stadium in England, for example. Then you've not got the oval, so do you do it on the cricket? Like there's so many countries that have not got the like, a good size. England would be lucky with cricket. They've got the cricket field. You could have it at Old Trafford there in Manchester. Um, there, there's definite cricket grounds you could have it in England, but in America then the oval. You're 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 getting a lot of problems here. Where do you have the game? Who do you play? Do you stop your own Australian fans being able to see the game? They've followed your team all the way through uh, the ladder. They've got into a finals game. Finals game then gets moved to London to try and expand the sport from the AFL. So you, you run the risk of annoying your own supporters in Australia who spend their hard-earned cash every other week to go and follow their team. And then they're not getting to see their team playing maybe a preliminary final. So there's loads and loads of little uh, things that could uh, cause upset or create problems on trying to do this but it simply will not grow internationally without doing it um, and if they do decide to do it it needs to be a big game it needs to be a game that there would be an appetite to see it needs to be well marketed and when I say well marketed they need to spend an awful lot of money on making people aware this game's coming to England or New York or a major city in the world like Tokyo I don't know where doesn't really matter where it's the same idea um, and then it needs to be it needs to be marketed properly so people are aware of it and this isn't something that you do once and hope everybody jumps on and goes, oh, we're AFL, L AFL fans all of a sudden. It doesn't work that way. It literally has to be happening every single year, consistently for years. Then they need to be looking into investing in the, say, for example, it was in England, investing in the clubs in England, trying to expand them, maybe sending sort of nearly retired AFL stars to go and play in England giving them wages, it's something that's going to need a lot of time, probably over a generation, maybe two generations in my opinion, if you look at the model in Australia where uh, uh, Aussie Rules was already widely watched and loved, um, you've got the Gold Coast Suns, very difficult to get them up and running, that could be a generation before they're competitive, um, so when you look at it even in national terms, it's proven difficult to even create new teams, never mind doing it internationally, so other ways in which they could do it, send guys that are like nearly retired or 
up and coming stars that maybe haven't been drafted straight away, put them into England, get them playing competitively there, helping the league grow there and, and, and slowly but surely it grows, more English people get on board. But as I say, it'll never be the number one sport anywhere else other than Australia because sports are very much established now. That's not to say that people aren't open to playing the game, enjoying the game, watching the game. We do have sports played in the UK. We've got ice hockey here as well. Yes, they might get full houses, but across the board, um, it's not a massively watched sport. Even rugby, which is a sport that is quite huge in Britain, rugby union, rugby league, etc. They're only a percentage of how much people love soccer. So, as much as I would say I'd love to see it happen, you've got to take into a lot of consideration. I mean, you have to really think about this now. How much time do you, are you going to give for it? Where are you going to? Where do you want it to grow? Do you want it to grow? And I play. If you're looking at it growing um, financially, you're not taking it to Africa. Um, let's be honest here, you're not taking it to Africa, you're probably not taking it into the poorer parts of the world like in South America if you want it to grow fine and that's for financial reasons um, but if you're looking at it to grow for the love of the sport you certainly want to introduce it into these places because if you look, use again soccer as the model, soccer's went into South America, it's went into Africa, it's went into all the poor countries in the world and it has gave them a way out of poverty. Um, so many superstars have came from South America and they've come from, and I'm going to talk about poverty, proper poverty. Um, and they're now millionaires playing the, the, the game that they love. They grew up so innocently playing in the streets, kicking a, not necessarily even a football when they were young, kicking a can or kicking a plastic bottle around. Now they're lighting up stadiums with 60,000 people in it and the biggest uh, soccer stage on the planet. So when you look at that, certainly for the love of the sport and the game, um, you can't discriminate in trying to grow it uh, internationally. Um, but if it's purely for financial reasons, it's going to have to be that countries like America, like Britain, or countries in Europe like Germany or Japan, these are the, or Scandinavia, these are the countries with the better economies um, uh, that you're going to be going to try and tap into. Let's be honest here, isn't it? That's where you're going to want to go. Um, so. So many variables, so many different things. A lot of it is, I'm having to ask questions back to you here. But it's certainly, I'm so happy to be asked the question and it's a privilege to be able to talk. Um, uh, maybe it's a long video for you, I'm not too sure. But at the same time, there's a lot of things just um, from coming, living in Europe, living in the UK and you look at the major sports here. Um, the hurdles you would have to step over um, in order to try and grow the game, the time that you would need to be, uh, time and effort you would need to put into it would be probably a couple of generations really to get it up and to a level that you would be happy with. It still wouldn't be AFL standards of Australia, but I mean, like, even if you could have an international tournament before, but between the teams, it would be in a couple of generations. You'd imagine a little bit more competitive. Um, and obviously the money that it's going to cost to do it, can, can it be sustainable? Can Australia, can Austra Australian public paying money and generating money into the AFL sustain the growth internationally in more than one country or even one country for that length of time? These are questions I put back to you. So thanks very much for um, giving me the questions because as I say, I have got a passion for this sport. I, I'm really, really keen on doing Aussie Rules stuff here, um, local to me, we have footy teams here, Ireland, it's actually not a terrible, it's not terrible, terrible, but it's nowhere near the standards that you'd be used to here, uh, well there, sorry, in Australia, um, but I'm keen to try and bring more footage of the local footy here, um, and again, talk to people here about Aussie rules about AFL. I'm keen to become kind of a unofficial international ambassador in my own right, just through my YouTube channels, just engaging with other people about the sport who maybe don't know too much about it, making them more aware of it, just slowly but surely. Um, and as I say, you never know, with a lot more people doing it, a lot more people spending time and money on it, it could become a sport 
I wouldn't say it's going to be massive outside of Australia, but it's certainly got potential to become quite a big game. I think that uh, American sports have been slowly coming here for a while now, and there is a lot more people watching the NFL. There's a lot more people playing NHL, ice hockey, basketball is quite um, well played in schools and stuff. I know we don't really necessarily have good teams here, but certainly sports that are played. Baseball, not so much, but um, like the sports will grow. They will grow if you keep if they keep spending money and putting the time and the effort in to trying to grow it. It can certainly work, um, and I hope it does. I hope it does because I'd love to see uh, local footy being played. Maybe you're getting crowd crowds of. I don't know, maybe a couple of thousand, five to ten thousand. I, I, that sounds like bad numbers to you guys when you're used to the arenas that you're playing in. But if you could get that number here, let me tell you, that is huge. Because a lot of the soccer clubs in Ireland, Northern Ireland, wouldn't get that sort of number. So if you could develop the sport that much, bearing in mind you've got the GAA in Northern Ireland, and Ireland, you're already taking their players off them um, and giving them like big wages to go over to... Australia and play in the AFL, so they've got the lure of the money and the, the better way of life in Australia um, with the AFL carrot being dangled in front of the players here. So if the as, as I say, if the, the sport could be built in Ireland and, and developed here, um, it's certainly got the opportunity. If people could turn it into a professional sport here, you could have it at a very high standard because you might find a lot of the GAA players that do not want to go to Australia to play. If they could get a full professional wage from AFL Ireland by playing the game, they might convert over to AFL, you never know. But anyway, thanks very much for the opportunity, I have went on a little bit, it's probably a little bit more longer than um, I thought that I was going to talk for, it's just when you start turning over one stone then there's another stone and another stone, there's so many layers to it, it's, it's, it's more than a question really, it's a, it's a huge topic, it's a massive topic. Um, but as I say, it really should have been just answered quickly by saying yes, I'd love to see it come internationally. But I felt that um, I wanted to go into a little bit more details on how and why and certain things I, th I feel would have to happen for there to be a hunger and a thirst for it here. Anyway, cheers. I'll see you all soon. Cheers, mate.